Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, aka Epic Zara, and I'm back with another video for you all. How are you doing today? How was your night? How was your morning? How was your afternoon? I hope you all are having a swell day wherever you are in the world. And I'd like to talk to you all today about my natural hair unpopular opinions. Now it's been super trendy on YouTube to be sharing our less than welcome opinions. And I figured that I'd hop on that bandwagon, but in my own special way. So today I want to share with you all my natural hair unpopular opinions that will help you grow and retain length. Now I'd also like to know you all's unpopular opinions so please don't be shy to let me know down below exactly what it is that you're thinking about natural hair that just needs to come out because we can all grow and learn from each other's opinions right? So <laughs> before I get too involved in this let me remind you guys to do four very simple things. Be sure to give the video one big thumbs up it lets me know and lets you two know that you enjoy this type of content. Be sure to comment down below again letting me know what your unpopular opinions are and anything else that you'd like to share with me. I really enjoy interacting with you all. So hearing from you guys really brightens my day. Be sure to share this video with anybody who's struggling in the natural hair department or anybody who you feel really just needs to hear this information. And last but certainly not least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video, y'all. Like this is a big happy family and I would love for you to be a part of it. So join me on my journey and let's get right into the video. <laughs> So my first opinion is actually super taboo and I feel like everybody on Twitter is finna come for me. But I like what I like. What can I say? <laughs> and I like Cantu a lot actually. Hate on me if you want is cheap and effective. And for my super low porosity, super coconut oil sensitive, super protein sensitive hair, it actually is really, really effective. A lot of the products exhibit a fairly low pH so they're able to lock moisture in my hair exceptionally well. And they're not really bad at moisturizing and nourishing my hair themselves. Now granted, they're not nearly as popping as some of my higher end natural hair products, all of my holy grail products, which I have linked down below in my Amazon store. You guys can check that out. But I mean, I love them just the way that they are. I use four products in particular amongst them. The Coil Calm Detangler is definitely my favorite. It, I don't even use it as a detangler, I use it as a leave-in. But the rest of the products I use from the Cantu line are linked down below in my Amazon store. You guys can check it out. Again, if you're a natural hair babe on a budget, if you're low porosity, these products are the products for you. I can keep my cornrows in my head for up to three months. Now I know that one is like really kind of nasty sounding, but let me tell you why it's not. If you are cleansing your scalp and your hair, properly as well as deep conditioning moisturizing and sealing your hair should be really healthy i have a video actually all about how i do that in this super stress-free nonchalant easygoing way and i'll link that right here for you all you guys can check that out just put that in another window so after you watch this video you can go and watch that but yeah y'all it does not have to be stressful to clean and cleanse your scalp and your hair not enough not, not. not only does this make wash day super stress free it actually really aids in the growth and retention departments not only does this reduce any tension or stress being applied to the scalp, it also reduces the overall amount of manipulation, which ultimately results in less splitting and breakage and leads to less hair fall overall. Now, this sounds like music to my ears, y'all. I'm trying to grow my hair. I'm not trying to be stressed and I'm trying to ensure that it's as healthy as it can be. Now, for me, leaving my hair in cornrows has actually been a game changer. And many, many moons ago, when I was a young natural starting out, like up to seven years ago, I think, I remember I wore a weave for like three months. Now, of course, I was cleansing my hair and my scalp really well, duh. Like, we're not trying to have mildew struggles, boo-boo probably one of the most significant gains I've seen in my natural hair, period. That actually taught me a really important lesson and that's why I can sit here confidently and say I will wear my cornrows in my head for three months. You can judge me if you like. If you guys would actually like me to do that though as a little bit of a challenge, let me know down below and we'll get that on and popping. <laughs> Now 
Now my next unpopular opinion goes against every Pinterest how to grow your hair and keep it shiny article you could probably ever see, but it's super effective for naturals with low porosity hair. And that is, I rinse my hair with warm to hot water. I know the natural hair Nazis are probably like, Sis, what did you say? Guys and gals, let's think about this for a moment. Now, if your hair is low porosity, that means that the cuticle is already super tight, stays very close. Your hair is not really porous, which means that it's difficult for substances to exit your hair and for them to enter your hair. When you hop in the shower, you know, you wash your hair, you deep condition and all of that jazz. You wanna make sure that everything is really penetrating your hair shaft. Typically, you shower and wash your hair in lukewarm to warm water, right? Now, you also have to moisturize your hair following that shower. If you're low porosity like me, it does not necessarily make sense to be rinsing your hair with cold water because you're just going to make it really difficult for whatever product you're trying to put on your hair next to actually penetrate the hair shaft. This is why I rinse my hair with warm water, y'all. It makes it super easy for me to then follow up with a moisturizer and then seal my hair. The cuticles are going to close whether you like it or not. It's best to age your hair in taking in products so it's stays moisturized for longer periods of time. Now my next natural hair unpopular opinion is about to be stepping on all the necks, but it's my opinion and you will hear it whether you like it or not. Twist outs and braid outs and other loose styles are extra slash unnecessary. Now, before you misunderstand what it is that I am trying to convey, I would like to clarify for you all because I love you guys and you know, we're a family. So what I'm really saying is that styling and wearing your hair out all the time is really unnecessary. I'm not saying don't do twist and braid, but if you do do them, I personally do not feel it is necessary to take them down. Generally, when I wear twister braids, I just leave them in my head. It's much less stress. And you'll see me rocking a wig or whatever else with my twister braids so that my hair can really just rest. I know a lot of naturals will say, Oh, you don't need a protective style. I wear my hair out every day and it grows down the back. Oh, I don't see the point of protective styling. But I'm here to let you all know that my hair has seen exponential gains as a result of leaving it alone, just letting it chill. Now, of course, y'all, I have a protective styling video right here that you can check out, letting you know exactly why protective styling is the light, the truth, and the way. I cannot stand Shea Moisture. I know that's a very unpopular opinion and they're probably gonna blacklist me, but I cannot stand Shea Moisture products. If you're low porosity, if you're protein sensitive, if you're coconut oil sensitive, Shea Moisture is not the line for you, not nah, boo boo. I know that they have a ton of options, but nothing, nothing, and I repeat, nothing from Shea Moisture has worked on my hair. Say for like two to three weeks ago, there are three products, only three out of how many dozens of products that have worked very well on my hair and I've linked them down below if you guys would like to see a video on those products do let me know but until then I'm still hating on Shea Moisture high key now if you would like to see the products that work super well for people with hair like us then you guys can check that out right here So this opinion is probably gonna get me blacklisted. Guys, I'm totally kidding. It's really not that deep, but finger detangling, as far as I'm concerned, is a scam. I think it's trash. Um, I'm not about that life. I cannot finger detangle exclusively. No, sweetie, no, honey. And let me tell you why. See, first of all, my hair is way too dense. There's too much hair on my head to be doing all of that nonsense for how many hours? Aside from that, like, my hair is pretty long. No, it's very long. Let's just be real. And I just don't have the energy to be finger detangling exclusively. And on top of that, it's really, really kinky. So nah, sweetheart. No, boo-boo. I cannot come and kill myself. I'd much rather use my tangle teaser type brush, which I do very effectively. And it doesn't rip out my hair. It's very gentle. It, like, massages my scalp 
releases the dead skin from my scalp. So there's so many benefits to using certain types of hairbrushes that I simply cannot relinquish to be finger detangling exclusively. I do low key do it when I'm twisting my hair and preparing it for wash day or just twisting it generally, but that's more separating gently and ensuring that all my hair is stretched and going the same direction than it is actual finger detangling. I don't be raking my hair with my fingers. That is just really painful. Now, if you all would like to see the tools I use on my hair, I've linked them again down below. You guys can check them out. My Tangle Teaser Type Brush is in there as well. Now, last but certainly not least, some of y'all are gonna come for me, but I'm a firm believer that certain topical treatments do actually aid in hair growth. Now, I know that hair growth is largely genetic, but this is how I conceptualize it. You apply certain creams, certain lotions, certain things to the skin on your body, right? And you see a positive difference. It's a similar concept. If you're providing certain cells with nutrients, then they're definitely going to take up those nutrients and they're going to increase their productivity. Now, what is hair? It's keratin, it's a protein, and the hair follicles are producing it, right? So if you're providing your hair follicles with the building blocks of protein, why wouldn't they produce that protein at a faster rate? It only makes sense. And you can't sit here and tell me that rice water, castor oil, green tea, and other such treatments do not have a positive effect on the growth and the health of hair. I mean, the scalp is skin. It's permeable, y'all. And there are already certain things in castor oil, in rice water, in green tea that are extremely skin permeable. There are other topical treatments that we could get into. And if you all would like a video on that, let me know in the comment section down below. There are a lot that are pretty controversial and a lot that are more widely accepted, but I don't mind sharing all of them with you. So y'all, that's the entire video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my unpopular opinions. I hope they weren't too inflammatory. And I hope that you learned something from them. I love you. You sitting there watching me. You're very special to me. And thank you for coming back all the time. Let me know again your unpopular opinions down below. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Be sure to share with anybody who you feel needs to hear this. And last but never ever least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. Thank you once again. I love you all so much. And I'll see you in the next video. God bless you guys.